there my very good friends and a warm welcoming good after news to you all on this video an AEW hoax is about to become real. I'm going to tell you the real reason why the AEW TNA partnership ended. There's a new WWE documentary coming to Netflix. And the latest on an AEW Fox TV deal. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the after news. Yes yes and if you want to know why we're not talking about the Undertaker Donald Trump uh, <laughs> what else was there on that video? I literally can't remember but anything else. Whole lot of stuff. I've got my nose here. Uh, the Rock. Change the Rock coming to a WWE stable, big changes. That was in the morning news. Yeah. You can check that one out. It'll be at the end of this video as well. But let's kick this one off by talking about an AEW internet hoax that is becoming real. <laughs> so ahead of this week's episode of Dynamite, uh, somebody, I, I don't know who, but made a match graphic. It was uh, the AEW international champion, Konosuke Takeshita, defending against CMLL megastar Mascara Dorada. Uh, and it was a very convincing match graphic. It was really good. Like it looked like it had come straight out of the AEW graphic. Ah. Ah. I saw it myself, got excited about it, and then had a look and the match wasn't listed anywhere uh -huh. else. But a bunch of people fell for this. It was just an elaborate hoax, basically. Uh, I'm not sure what the person who made who gets out of that, but it was fun. So yeah. maybe they just have a laugh. A prankster. Yeah, maybe they just have a laugh and they move on. But it got a lot of people excited because that would be an excellent match. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, I think Dynamite already had five matches announced, and yeah. that's their usual number. Anyway... Uh, now, apparently, uh, it might actually happen. Oh. <laughs> so this is according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, uh, saying that AEW loves the idea of that match and now wants to book it. So there you go. That's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, they've taken this thing that they, they obviously saw this fake graphic. <laughs> they saw uh, how excited people were getting about it and falling for it. And they got excited themselves. I like the fact that they do that. You it's know. pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And it'll be a great match. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah like you say, you generated so much buzz around it. It's understandable. They looked at that and went, well, we've got a partnership. Mm -hmm. uh, I did see, did you see Tony Storm's uh, little promotional interview regarding CML? Well, she call herself the Lucha Whore. Yeah, that, her words. Her words. She said that. <laughs> <laughs> She's the best. Uh, she is the best. PWI 250, of there course. Congratulations go. to her. Uh, but, yeah, they saw the buzz. That, and I like the fact that they're like, Fine, let's do it. This yeah. is what this is one of the great things about AEW, the fact that they don't just go, no, we're set in our ways, this is what we're doing. If something or someone comes up or becomes hot and they're like, why not? Let's do it. Yeah. Let's go. Um, and to be honest, anything that gets Kanosuke Takeshita wrestling regularly on my television is absolutely fine by me. I love that man. I'm glad he's finally getting the push he's deserved for quite some time within AEW. Yeah, Mas Mascara Dorada is just a wonderful wrestler too. Uh, the most fun I've had watching wrestling a lot of the time has come from CMLL this year because it's like, I don't need to like think about it for my job, basically. Mm. I can just watch CMLL and go, hey, that was a really cool match. I don't need to view it analytically. I can just be a little nerd, a little mark, uh, which is fun. So I would, I, I'd actually love to see this match. I think it'd be great. I've got a great line about this. It just pops into my head. If you watch the video back, if you re rewind about 30 seconds, spot the moment it pops into my head whilst Andy's talking about some <laughs> genuine wrestling points. Let's hope... Takeshi doesn't kick his ass too much, and then Mascara doesn't run. A little makeup joke for you there on a Friday. You can have that one for free. You can. <laughs> Take it, please. Put your money away. <laughs> Take it. But, Take it. Andy, you talked there about the uh, AWCMLL partnership. Obviously, previously, yeah. AW had a partnership with TNA, but why did it end? Well, Sean Ross Sapp has been chatting with the uh, former TNA president, of course, Scott Damore, uh, regarding everything that went on there and Omega's run as uh, champion as well and he told Fightful Select did Scott Damore um, that Kenny Omega actually wants to do a lot more uh, a lot more matches as part of this AWTNA partnership particularly he mentions here uh, with Eddie Edwards and Josh Alexander but ultimately a lot of restrictions are what ended the partnership basically um, but he did say that Kenny Omega did great numbers to the company the company's two pay-per-views with Omega uh, with Omega on there were the highest grossing in TNA history so it was very successful Successful yeah. for TNA, but unfortunately, yeah, restrictions meant that they couldn't really go as all in uh, as they wanted to on this. You'd imagine that because Kenny was the world champion, there was a lot of hey, like we have to be protective of this guy mm. in his booking. Also, Kenny was like physically destroyed at this yeah, point he was in his crash, Tony. So you'd imagine there's a bit of that. Yeah, I well, mean, he's still like, yeah, but I still want to work Eddie Edwards and Josh Alexander because they're great. Yeah, <laughs> this, I mean, the, the 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 clue was right there when Tony and. Tony Khan and Tony Schiavone were doing those adverts on TNA where they were ripping the piss out of TNA. Yeah. Um, you kind of, I mean, that was quite, quite telling, I think. Um, 
So yeah, it was beneficial to TNA for a little while. Obviously, it wasn't a massively long-term thing. Could they have done more with it? Yeah, I think yeah. they probably could have, for sure. Uh, well, I watched that episode when he fought uh, Christian Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah good stuff. Uh, Kenny wrestled Sammy Callahan as well. Uh, so, you know, there's some stuff there that was pretty fun. Uh, the Good Brothers came over. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Doc Gallows beating Frankie Kazarian. Uh, Gallows, was, Gallows, Gallows was a really funny one when they were being terrorised, when they were in the limo. Yeah, yeah. I seem to remember that was a class segment. Sid really likes that. Yeah, he's a funny guy, man. He's really funny. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, not a long-term thing. Uh, the New Japan partnership's been a bit more fruitful. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to know. Uh, I mean, they, that would have been nice if they could have done more. Like you say, as Scott said, the restrictions have obviously put pay to all that. Um, it's difficult to know how to handle a relationship with TNA without sort of little brother in them too much. You know, we've talked a lot about the WWE one recently and them just sort of going, yeah, you can have some NXT talent and maybe like a Natalia popping up on one of your shows, but we'll take Jordan Grace, we'll take Joe Hendry, we'll take <laughs> MSK. You Josh know, we'll Alexander, take, yeah. Maybe. They're going to be cherry picking them. But at the end of the day, if it's beneficial for TNA, uh, and obviously the Kenny Omega partnership in particular was, then good news for them. I, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I mean, TNA, as you've mentioned on many times, will never die. Yeah, it's, it'll be here after it. WWE and AEW are finished. Yeah, it'll be here after the Earth is like, when this planet turns into a meatball, TNA will still be here. You ready for some meatballs? <laughs> you got meatballs. Um, to what, was this, what was the combo here? It was Sean Ross Sapp speaking to Scott Demore. Indeed. If you say that too quickly, you almost end up with uh, Scott Stapp, who's the front man of Creed. <laughs> speaking of The Office. So there you go. Oh, that is a... We need to rip another one of those in The Office today. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Um, but I like, I like the fact that we've got TNA there as this third promotion within... Uh, United States obviously because otherwise yeah people like Joe Hendry it was a great platform for him obviously recently and as a place for someone like uh, Mustafa Ali or the Hardy Boys apparently uh, to go and, and do some other stuff outside of the two big promotions I think it's great yeah yeah and Joe Good Hendry's be. now going to do Eurovision apparently yes we talked Fair about play. that yesterday Fair he's going to win the world title from Nick Nemeth and defend it at Eurovision so I apologise for saying he was uh, blowing his Royal Rumble appearance he was it's, it's Eurovision, Eurovision. It's, but who could have guessed which, that to be honest in my world is bigger than the Royal Rumble <laughs> so oh boy well uh, the only Eurovision I've seen in the past like 15 years is that guy with the saxophone. You know, the, yes the sax someone mentioned that in the comments yesterday I can't, do you remember Lordy as yeah, well I, uh, yes I went to see them in Glasgow about four months after Eurovision because I was like, this rocks. <laughs> me, <laughs> and it did. Me, Phil uh, and Douse, James Douse, shout out to the legend, uh, went to see Daddy Freyer, uh, who was the uh, Icelandic entry, I believe, uh. who was who did a couple a couple of years. It was amazing uh. what he did. Eurovision, everyone knows I'm a big pop music fan, yeah. so tune into that. <laughs> shout out to Sam Ryder as well, the, the UK guy who came second for us a couple of years Big back. Sam. That is a banger here, Spaceman. Legend. I've not heard it. Yeah. He looks great. I'll show, he's got, his, his hair is incredible. I'll show uh, you a picture after hair. this. Hairs. Who needs that? Who needs it? Hairs. I don't, I don't relate to hairs. Uh, right, next one. Has this person got hair? Uh, it's Nick Khan. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Um, evil. Con confirmation. Uh, right, Bloomberg have been on. Well, Nick Khan's been on and Bloomberg have put it out there. Uh, yeah, there's some more Netflix stuff coming. Ah. So I'll read the report. WWE Entertainment Inc. Mm. Wait, that's not right. Uh, part of TKO Group Holdings has set to debut a behind-the-scenes documentary series on Netflix. Uh, this was confirmed by Nick Khan on Thursday. Uh, the new series is part of WWE's expanding partnership with Netflix. Uh, and obviously it comes after uh, the two Part companies entered a potential uh, 10, 5 year, maybe 10 year partnership yeah. where Raw is going there and like over here in the UK, everything's going everything. there, baby. It's going to be a big payday for not me because I'll be paying less money. What am I on about? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to get my parents to watch it now because they've got Netflix. Why the heck not? They'll Just look where your son goes, Daddy, you're proud now. He watched 10 minutes and go, get this in the bin. Um, obviously, we've just had the Vince documentary, uh, which. I think was made for more casual audiences. Yes. Uh, the people I know who watched it who are not massive wrestling fans but were wrestling fans like 20 years ago loved it 
uh, people like us who are in the weeds every day didn't necessarily learn anything. But if you want to know the stuff that they missed out or failed to cover in more detail, me and Hamlet did a, a really fun long piece about yeah. that, uh, which is available on the channel right now. It is a long boy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they a lot got... of details. Uh, it's me. It's me sitting here saying, Hamlet, tell me more about the Montreal Screwjob. He's all Hamlet's work, so yeah. him give him all the credit. In the uh, world. He loves the Montreal. Screwjob. He does. He's me, 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 me. Shut up, Michael. Big Shawn Michaels guy. He's Brett. <laughs> Hey's Brett, hey's Jeff Jarrett, hey's Diesel. That's, yeah. that's Michael Hamlet. Absolutely loves, who's somebody he hates? Uh, a know. dog. Yep. Newcastle United football <laughs> club. There you go. But I tell you what, right, um, I'm a big documentary guy. I'd say arguably that's, aside from saying I'm going to finish watching Breaking Bad, it's the one of the main things that I watch on Netflix is the, you know, the doc, I love their documentaries, mainly the really horrific crime ones, <laughs> if I'm brutally honest, but... Uh, I also love me some behind the scenes footage. Yeah. Like Any time you see that, whether it be on Twitter or like just happened to be used in these documentaries or, or or whatever it may be, I'm fascinated by it. I love seeing just walking down those hallways and those little conversations happening and stuff like that. So I'm intrigued by this. I'm definitely going to be watching it. Yeah, probably be uh, a bit more palatable to people like us who are in the weeds of yeah. wrestling every single day. They know, um, they know, they know, they know the horde that is coming to Netflix in January. Basically, they do. The the orcs are arriving. Yeah. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Okay. I'm so excited to get it all on Netflix though. Here. Yeah, I hope the archives on there. Yes, that's the big thing, isn't it? I don't know if anything's come out about that yet, but yeah, it'd be nice. Yeah, maybe, maybe don't delete your network WWE network subscription just yet. If you're in the UK, if you want to go back and watch. Uh, balls of fire or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> right, uh, let's bring you the latest on the AW Fox TV deal. Loads of speculation on this after AW failed to get a billion dollars for their TV deal and basically have announced they're shutting their doors. Yeah, they're they? going out of business yeah. out here. Yeah, some what guy they... on Twitter said they spend over five uh, hundred million on yeah. salaries. And, so. and uh, he had a bunch of numbers in his name, so that yeah. makes sense. He must be a numbers guy. He had a Jim Cornette uh, picture in his profile, so. Clearly correct. Looks like we got ourselves a qualified accountant <laughs> over here. Uh, look, they did what was it, 170, 185 million? I've seen numbers. Yeah, one, 175. Yeah, yeah okay. Average, yeah. Um, for their, their, obviously their new TV deal, WBD. But there's still speculation as to what's happening with uh, AW and Fox, um, and particularly AW Shockwave. But Sean Ross Sapp uh, has provided a little bit of an update on this, basically saying, I've not heard of anything imminent on that front. No deal is finalised. Um, so you would assume that either it's not happening or conversations are still ongoing. But yeah, don't expect any announcements coming soon. If you think about the amount of times me and Andy sat here said, AW TV deal, AW TV deal coming soon. And so did Tony Khan. And then how long it took for that to drop. I would imagine that we aren't going to hear anything about AW and a Fox TV deal for Shockwave until at least 2025. I'd imagine that a lot of podcaster, old head podcasters out there are probably licking their lips at this story because they made a lot of money off of pretending that the previous TV deal, the TV deal, TV deal I said, yes. didn't exist before. So hey, here's another one. You can say, it's not real, it's fake, all of this. So yeah, it's a see what happens situation, isn't it? They've yeah. already registered the trademark for Shockwave, so they obviously think that there's a chance that it happens. Um, I hope that if it, I've said this before, I hope that if it does happen, it's a consequential show with importance. Yes. Stuff. Big angles, big matches, uh, good reason to tune in every week. I think uh, I always watch Rampage when there's a hyped match or my favourites are on it. Um, but the, week to week, there was never much incentive no. to watch every minute of that show. I hope it's different for Shockwave. Now, I was uh, doing some prep for the Wrestle Culture quiz today and saw when, like, Brian Danielson was wrestling in the Continental Classic on Rampage and stuff and thought, yeah, I used to watch those sorts of things, but now it's just not, it's inessential to me, uh, yeah. AW Rampage, and I could not care less about Battle of the Belts, I do apologise, but... Uh, you could say, so... Yeah, yeah, they need to do more than just be like, title eliminators where you can fairly obviously guess that the champion's not going to get pinned, uh, and title matches where not a chance in hell of a title change, yeah. but, um, yeah, I think... I hope when Shockwave comes along, if it does, like you say, they, they really put some importance behind it and refocus on AW Collision as well. I know it's just, they're, they're, they're obviously like, look, Dynamite is the, has great matches as well, but it has the big angles and events on yeah. that show. Yeah. And Collision is just kind of like, here's two hours of great wrestling, but I, I don't know, I just need a little bit more to be perfect. You honest. want more meat on the bone. Indeed. Juice in the tin. Indeed, you put, put Juice Robinson on there for me. 
Oh, give him give him five minutes with a microphone every week. Oh my goodness! Dressed as a lumberjack, preferably. the juice is loose. That's what they should call a it. Who's yeah. wine gums? Is that everything? Yeah. Bye. Okay. Uh, morning news. Talking about Donald Trump on the Undertaker's podcast and The Rock uh, and WrestleMania. Right here. Have fun. It'll be good. Bye. <laughs>